the events of almost a year ago, um, nearly a year ago, Washington was the site of major protests after the murder of George Floyd uh, in Minnesota. Reflect on the role of then President Donald Trump in the charged atmosphere here in Washington then. Well, you know, it's, it's so incredible um, how different it is uh, in, in the last five months of just having stable leadership uh, at the White House. And quite frankly, I don't even think I appreciated how charged and toxic, um, you know, a situation was that, that we were living in. Uh, but the, the president, um, even, you know, before the protests began in, in real numbers, made some incendiary comments um, that I found uh, to be racially charged and signaling what their true intent was days before um, the, the protests began in earnest. Um, and we saw him kind of live out the rhetoric that he was spewing. He said something like, uh, we are going to unleash mm -hmm. violent dogs or, you know, look out, be on the, you know, so I, I knew then um, that, it could be bad um, with this president, you know, inciting um, this is just violent uh, speech that was meant to trigger um, for many people a, a dark time in, in American history uh, where Americans experience police unleashing dogs on American citizens. And uh, I, I knew in, in the pit of my stomach what we had to brace ourselves for. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about Black Lives Matter Plaza which um, was a genius move. I think I told you at the time, and a genius move that was emulated in other cities across the country. Yeah. Uh, but it also provided a focal point that helped keep demonstrators, which was a, a concern at the time, to keep demonstrators from spreading out across the city. Um, the name is stretched on 16th Street between um, H, yeah. H, H and K Streets Northwest. Um, the, the, that stretch has been officially named, um, renamed Black Lives Matter Plaza. But are the big, bold, iconic yellow letters permanent on that stretch of 16th Street? Well, they are. Uh, in fact, right now we're undergoing um, a process to to make the installation more permanent um, and with with lighting and landscaping um, and all the things that you expect in an iconic art installation. Uh, and you're right to point out, Jonathan, we had a, just an unprecedented experience with the president of the United States taking over uh, D.C. streets. Uh, I had the experience of walking from my office at, at City Hall over uh, to in front of uh, Lafayette Square and seeing, you know, streets, our streets, D.C. streets blocked by uh, unidentified federal forces with long guns. Uh, in you know the clergy who were trying to to go uh, on a, on the walk, you know just everybody was blocked. Um, and so uh, we thought, what a better way to not only take back our street and get them off of our street and keep them from blocking DC residents and members of clergy and anybody else who wanted to walk down the street, um, but to install um, this piece of art with a very affirming message that not only our residents needed to hear, but um, people around the world needed to hear. And they needed to make sure, and they really appreciated that Donald Trump couldn't avoid it. Um, and so uh, we are going to uh, make that, that installation and we're improving it actually uh, right now. And uh, it will be a permanent art installation in the district. Um, I was there when you and now the late Congressman John Lewis, when he visited Black Lives Matter Plaza, it yep. was uh, June uh, of last year. Can you reflect a little bit on what that yep. was like for you to be there with him? Um, it is, you know, there, there are a lot of great perks to a job like this, but I have to put that as as tops among them. I'd gotten a chance to, to meet, uh, spend a lot of time with the congressman in Selma, 
um, probably about a year, maybe two years before that on, yeah, on the, I was on the that trip. pilgrimage to Selma. And yeah. it was amazing. Even then, I was struck by how generous he was with his time. I think what he knew and what maybe I underappreciated was, you know, he saw this as a time to educate leaders coming behind him and make clear to us that it's our turn. It's our turn to take the baton, exercise moral leadership, and lead, um, and do the right things to uh, make our country more fair uh, and more just. He uh, saw the importance, not only of being at Black Lives Matter Plaza, um, and he knew, I think, that you know he was definitely facing uh, the twilight of his life, but it was also a full circle moment for him because he kind of looked at me and I don't know if you overheard him say, he looked at one of the hotels, the Hilton there that's there in the corner. He said, you know, that's where I stayed um, right before um, the, the March on Washington. Um, at the time, he was the last living speaker um, from um, the March on Washington that happened uh, at the, the Lincoln Memorial when Dr. King delivered his, uh, his, his famous words. And he, he was just kind of, I could see that he was reliving um, that moment and it was a full circle moment for him. Uh, so we, we know that he, he's a son of the South, but I also felt um, privileged as a DC mayor that he, he saw DC, he had a place for DC uh, in his heart too. Mm -hmm.